Oftentimes we meet people and they would say, well, what, do you, what does your church believe? Why are you here? Why do you exist? Where did you come from? And I would simply go back to the essential connection with Jesus Christ being our Savior and the Son of God and going all the way back to Him and the Holy Apostles. And so we recognize Jesus as not only divine being the Son of God, but we also recognize the fact that He openly emptied Himself and came to the earth, became a human being like us in order to save us. And so in the Orthodox Church, we celebrate Christ. We, uh, of course, remember how he instituted the Lord's Supper and was able to offer himself in Holy Communion in the body and blood of Christ. And that is the focus or central part of our worship. Our church has many sacraments. Uh, like many mainstream Christians, there are seven sacraments in which we participate in as the major sacraments of our church, but the central most important sacrament for us as Orthodox Christians is the Divine Liturgy. And so as Orthodox Christians, uh, we uh, celebrate the Divine Liturgy almost uh, throughout the whole entire year. It could be celebrated theoretically every day of the year. Uh, of course, most people uh, that are working and aren't able to come every day to the church come on Sunday and they receive not only the teaching and reminders about who Christ is, but also lessons for life through the scripture, through the homily that the clergy and others uh, provide in order to bring people to Christ and inspire them to live the faith. And as Orthodox Christians, for us, we don't think of it as a representation, but the actual body and blood of Christ. We are participants in the mystical or last supper of Christ. When we talk about the sacraments of the church, we you sometimes hear us talk about the seven sacraments of the church, the primary one being the Eucharist, the Divine Liturgy, but we also talk about baptism, chrismation. To become part of the church is to enter into the life of Christ through his death, through his baptism, and then through his resurrection. We use all of our senses in the Orthodox Church to worship our eyes to see the beauty of the church and the holy icons. We smell the holy incense, we taste holy communion. Our hearing so that we may hear the word of God as well as all the beautiful hymnology of the church which is done by either our Annunciation Cathedral Choir or our very gifted and talented chanters. So when we do the sign of the cross and confess our faith and uh, of course we have posture in, uh, in our worship of standing and kneeling and sitting and so on. So we're really using our whole self when we worship. When we talk about worship in the Orthodox Church, we're talking about coming into an encounter with the living God, coming, entering into his presence. We're surrounded by the icons of our church, the beautiful mosaics that we have here at the Annunciation Cathedral in Atlanta. And we're reminded that we're surrounded by the saints in our worship, by 2,000 years of a living history that we now somehow mysteriously enter into and participate with them. For us, salvation is a continuous process. I am not just saved once and I'm good to go, but rather I am a continuous journey. I was saved, I am being saved, I will be saved. So as this process continues, yesterday I worked for salvation, today I'm working towards salvation, tomorrow I will continue to work towards salvation. Speaking as someone who embraced orthodoxy at a later point in my life, now many years ago, what drew me to the church and kept me here, more importantly, is not only that historical connection to the early church, to the Church of Jesus Christ and his apostles, to those churches that St. Paul writes his letters to, that we read in the New Testament. Many of the letters of St. Paul when he was on his missionary journeys 
uh, talks about the significant places where he taught about the faith and taught about the good news of Christ and salvation, but he also went to some of the places of our Greek ancestors, like cities of, like Corinth, Athens, Thessalonica, and other wonderful places. But it is that living history. It is that not only an, an intellectual continuity, but a spiritual continuity surrounded by the church, a church that's not divided by space or time. And I would definitely say that there is no experience like that of the Orthodox Church. You actually have to really come and experience it for yourself. For over a thousand years, there was just one Christian church founded by Christ. And you may say, well, what do you mean by that? You mean there's more than one now? And so if we look at history, we'd have to say yes because in 1054, the one church established by Christ separated into two, Greek Orthodoxy, or Eastern Orthodoxy, and Roman Catholicism. From that moment on, once Martin Luther breaks away from the Catholic Church, all of a sudden there are many more denominations of Christianity where some people estimate today there are actually over 22,000 different Christian denominations. Why are we not all together as one? Uh, unfortunately, because we don't all believe the same things that we did in the early church. And there are some uh, differences, but there are also many similarities. And you are welcome, all, everyone, to please come and enjoy uh, the experience of seeing what it's like to worship in a church that has existed for almost 2,000 years.